I didn't know the name Jean-Pierre Valerino, but Vanishing Ink just changed that with their latest book release. This is a legacy book, one of my favorite types of magic books, with a very reasonable price tag. This is a monster of a book in more ways than one. And while it's an amazing work for sleight of hand artists, it's not without flaw, including one that disappointed me, but we'll talk about that later in the episode. Before we get too deep, let's learn more about this artist and whether this legacy card magic book is for you. Jean-Pierre Valerino is a French magician and magicians of my age and older might recognize him from the world's greatest magic specials. He's focused on sleight of hand magic, especially magic with playing cards, poetic pieces set to music. With his fluid and unique style, Valerino placed third at FISM in Lausanne, Switzerland for micro magic, and portions of that act are tipped in this book, as well as dozens and dozens of routines, along with his takes on classic slights, many of which he developed himself. Everything is lavishly photographed and is explained in detail by established magic author John Lovick. This is a hardcover book with more than 300 pages of slights and routines. This is a meaty book and dense with magic. As a legacy book, it encompasses all of the creator's best of work culled from decades of experience. While mostly card magic, it also has a small section of coin routines towards the end of the book. At $65, it seems like a very reasonable price for what you get. So. Is it worth your investment? It's a great book with some fantastic and uniquely styled magic, but there are some drawbacks you need to know about. Let's cover what you get in this book. There are 25 slights taught, several of which were invented by the author, but all of them are taught with his own unique style. Jean-Pierre Valerino is perhaps best known for the invention of the rumba count, which allows you to seemingly display the faces of four different cards as one card. This is an alternative to a frustration count, but in my opinion, is probably a better move. And there are over 60 routines, almost all in the spirit of the classics. I'm talking about tricks like triumph, ace assemblies, sandwich routines, collectors, coincidences, etc. Some of this material can be done stand up, but I don't think that you're going to find a lot of walk around pieces. This is mostly tabled, seated magic, the way that Valerino likes to perform. He likes to have the music set up, the correct staging, the audience in the right position around him. So if you're a hobbyist and you find yourself in these types of performing situations where you have a table or a surface that you're kind of controlling, then this could be the perfect type of material for you. This is old school, beautiful sleight of hand. I think that Valerino has a very interesting style because he isn't afraid to use some gaffes or gimmicks or some little things to add to the cards, and yet he still incorporates sleight of hand into almost every routine. And if you buy the book directly from Vanishing Ink, you get access to 80 videos of performance clips. These clips will show you how the slights and routines should look. But please note, these are not instructional videos. They are mostly head-on performance clips, oftentimes with one studio participant. It's a very nice touch, but you'll still be able to learn everything you need just from the book without these supplemental videos. I mentioned the FISM Act, and of course, many people will be interested to read how he accomplished the things that he did, so you'll learn his signed card into dollar bill routine in here as well as his production of four aces from the deck and his coin production routine, among others. The book is extremely lavishly photographed, and in my opinion, almost too photographed, but more on that in a minute. Apparently, there were over 2,000 photos taken for this book, and I think they included all of them. I'm certainly not going to count to double check that. I should add that each write-up starts with the background, which is where he gives the crediting if there was inspiration or a move that started his journey towards his own slight or routine. That's discussed at the beginning. If there's a setup, then they'll talk about that. And then there's a write-up of the entire performance, complete with the script, the numbering that matches up with the pictures, so that you can follow along and have no trouble learning these routines. So what level of magician would benefit from this material? This is a solidly inter intermediate card magic book. Sure, it has a few coin pieces, but seriously, 90% of this material is cards. There aren't a lot of special things that you need to be performing this magic because it is 
at its core essential sleight of hand. If you have a pack of playing cards, maybe some coins, a handkerchief, boxes, you can make all of the gimmicks that he uses by yourself and he'll teach you how to do that. And if you need some basic things like double backer cards or double facer cards, then I'm sure the average magician will probably have that lying around. And most of his card magic is very sleight of hand focused. There are some easier to do routines and sleights, but much of this will push you to learn some sleight of hand. And that can be a good thing. I know that when I talk about sleight of hand, some people get a little bit afraid about that, but most of these sleights are very accessible, and he teaches you in exact detail how to perform all of them. With all of the pictures, you'll have no difficulty in learning what it is that you need to do to accomplish this sleight of hand, which is where I could see this book making a good intermediate step between someone who's looking to learn a little bit more sleight of hand after they've learned some self-working miracles and maybe a couple of basic sleights like a double lift. In brief, I think you'll be able to pick and choose the slights that work for you and your magic or the routines that you think will challenge and interest you. So it's a vanishing ink book with some superlative sleight of hand. What's not to like, Jeff? Well, candidly, I have one main gripe with this book and it's the pictures. This level of hyper illustration is both a pro and a con. On the pro side, there's no difficulty in knowing what your hands need to be doing at any given moment in the routine. And it adds a lot of texture to the book with splashes of color. However, on the flip side of that, this book uses a heavier paper than a typical magic book, which makes it deceptively heavy. And in fact, I feel that it's almost so heavy, it would be uncomfortable to sit there with it in your lap. You'll almost always need to be at a table or a desk to be comfortable with this book. In addition, I found it almost overwhelming with the number of pictures. It's slightly overstimulating to have all of these pictures crowding the routine as you're trying to read through a trick. The layout is still nice, it just has too many pictures for my liking. It's almost a hybrid and makes one question where do you draw the line between learning from a book and learning from a video. But if you love card magic or sleight of hand, then there's plenty to like about this book. And it seems like a no-brainer to pick it up for the price and what you get, as well as a change of pace from the traditional American magician book. It's definitely a classy volume and one that you'll be proud to have on your shelf. If you're into artistic and intermediate to advanced sleight of hand magic with playing cards, then you may want to check out my review of Guy Hollingworth's Drawing Room Deceptions here. And if you're not into sleight of hand, but rather self-working miracles, you may want to check out this review. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.